right. All right, good afternoon. We see a familiar face on the screen. Ramiz, can you hear us? Excellent. You've yes, got I can hear you very well, Stephen. Perfect, you. perfect. Thank you so much for taking the time to, uh, to join us. It was quite an appetite to hear from you. Uh, so I will turn it over to you uh, for some opening comments, and then uh, we'll take some, well, you will take some questions, and then we'll have the regular briefing. Go ahead. Thank you very much, Stephen. And um, thank you, colleagues, and uh, always happy to meet with you all uh, in these important uh, non-briefings. Uh, well, let me first begin with to say that Afghanistan remains to be the world's largest humanitarian crisis in 2023, uh, notwithstanding, of course, the recent uh, devastating earthquakes in Turkey and Syria, which we have seen. And uh, this country has uh, systemic crises. It's very much prone to natural disasters. Uh, the frequency and intensity of the natural disasters related to climate change uh, and structural limitations in mitigating the impact of the climate change, uh, the fact that there is a considerable burden of displacement, and everything we spoke so many times in this briefing continues to contribute to what is uh, the heavy humanitarian burden in Afghanistan. Um, 18 months, last 18 months, have seen a number of scaling effects of this economic uh, decline. And uh, yes, uh, GDP in the in the period under review went down by 30, 35 percent in real terms by the end of 2022. Um, cost of the food basket is up 30 percent, and uh, the total loss of jobs is 700,000 uh, people. Now, uh, some of you have followed the news when you have seen uh, the reports from the de facto authorities of some economic uptake, but then you compare that to the decline which happened in the 18 months first. Of course, this, this is being um, negated. Um, the situation with employment uh, in 22 uh, continued to be um, quite high. Unemployment was up to 40%. Uh, and uh, around three quarters of the people's income is now spent on food items. So um, we appealed for uh, $4.6 billion this year to assist the people in need, and uh, we are, are uh, estimating that 28 million people in Afghanistan are in the need of various uh, terms of assistance. So the uh, climate change-related and uh, economic downturn um, related issues continue to drive uh, the, the crisis inside of Afghanistan. The issues of human rights remain to be, of course, in focus, and uh, female participation in the humanitarian action is something which is very much in focus with recent edicts, and um, we have consistently engaged uh, with the de facto authorities uh, with, the per with the first major purposes. The number one was to overturn the ban, uh, to number two is to find practical solutions, workarounds uh, that enable continued delivery of the principle of life-saving assistance. Uh, number four is to achieve a greater understanding behind the reasons um, for, for this ban, including any concerns uh, that the de facto authorities may have and how this might be addressed so that we continue to work with women and through women and to address women's needs. And of course, uh, to explore the opportunities of sector specific and geographic specific resumptions. Um, uh, we have now seen a, a larger resumption of uh, the essential operations by the humanitarian organizations, which might have stopped or uh, paused periodically some of the activities, uh, specifically after the announcement of the ban. Uh, having said this, uh, we, um, for instance, have seen that if in the previous month, 17% of organizations uh, were operating fully. Uh, in the latest survey, um, we have seen that that uh, snapshot increased to 22%, um, and that, that's a sign of the resumption, but it doesn't mean that we always have uh, uh, a much easier situation uh, when it comes to the female participation in the humanitarian work. Uh, from the very beginning, uh, some of our uh, data had indicated that the higher access for female for the action has been only in 40% uh, of uh, the districts in Afghanistan, and in 51%, we continue to experience various limitations. Having said this, the humanitarian community remains to be very uh, 
determined to continue to deliver humanitarian assistance, deliver it in principled and in dedicated manner, uh, deliver it with women and for women, and our commitment to the people of Afghanistan remains. And this is much probably for the introduction, and uh, Stefan, I will be very happy to take questions which uh, our correspondents may have online or in the room. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ramiz. Uh, we'll go to Edie and then uh, Miriam. Sorry. Go, you're, Thank go, you very much. If you could just take off your mask when you ask the question, I think it's. Thank you, Ramiz. This letter from the Associated Press. Um, can you give us um, an update on whether there has been any significant change uh, for um, girls' education and women working? Um, in the recent months, and uh, what is the UN doing to uh, try and spur uh, change by the Taliban regime? Uh, hold on, you, you're, you're, we can't hear you, Ramiz. You're muted. Can you hear me there now? we go, perfect. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, first of all, thank you for the question, and I regret to say that uh, to the date we haven't seen any news or any encouraging uh, developments with regard to the girls' education. We remain where we were. Unfortunately, schools are closed, and uh, uh, of course, the hope is that it's been one year since the ban, that the ban on the schools uh, will be lifted. UN continues to advocate for us. Uh, we continue to be in direct communication with de facto authorities at all levels about the uh, restart of the schools uh, for girls. We are uh, ready to assist uh, with education programs for girls as soon as those programs in former schools uh, resume. Um, important to note that, first of all, we continue to support and that's been ongoing. All the community education activities, we support education for girls up to the level six and to the boys. And of course, we will be very happy to resume that assistance uh, for the girls as soon, um, about level six, as soon as the de facto authorities allow this to happen. We continue to engage also uh, with uh, the countries from uh, Ulema, uh, with all Muslim countries who continue to join us in the advocacy efforts, uh, also from our organization of Islamic Conference in bringing uh, to the attention of the database, the importance of uh, removal of the ban and of the restart of the education. Uh, so there has not been any major change in the areas uh, which you were asking uh, about since our last briefing. Thank you very much. Uh, Miriam, please. And thank you, Mr. Alakpurov. This is Miriam Ramadi, um, uh, Afghanistan International. Um, last time uh, Mr. Griffiths uh, was in Afghanistan, asked the Taliban to clear some more women to work with the United Nations to uh, um, help with the humanitarian assistance. And how did the Taliban respond to that? Did they clear more women to work with you uh, on the ground? And also, um, there are reports that the aid is not reaching people who are in dire need of humanitarian assistance. Um, the Taliban are uh, in interfering with your work. Can you um, also clarify um, if the Taliban are actually interfering with your work on the ground? Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, first of all, uh, right now, um, United Nations staff uh, are not affected by the ban. Uh, and uh, since uh, the visit of the UN Emergency and Relief Coordinator, Martin Griffiths, to the country, uh, we do have uh, two major uh, exceptions. One of them is to the health sector, and the second one is uh, related to the um, education sector. Now, the health sector uh, exemptions on female participation uh, include uh, not just medical service delivery in the facilities, but also psychological support, community-based health activities, nutrition, and um, it is applied to all female staff working in offices, hospitals, health centers, or mobile teams. 
the same applies to treatment of teachers, including providing community-based education from NGOs. Now, this is um, uh, this is just on the national level. There is a lot more localized solutions, but those localized solutions are obviously within the frameworks of uh, what is the situation on the ground. That is availability of mahrams, availability of uh, gender segregated transportation, and application of uh, the. Um, uh, of the chadur, uh, of the of the hijab. Now, uh, and uh, it is varying from one province to another. As you also know, the same situation is in the education. In a number of other provinces, the schools remain open, and obviously, the situation in those uh, provinces and in those districts is quite similar with the uh, female participation in the humanitarian action. When it comes to the access or interferences uh, with the humanitarian aid distribution or provision of assistance, or the fact that always we hear that not everybody gets the assistance. Uh, let's be very real, 28 million people in Afghanistan need the assistance. And we appealed uh, for um, really $4 billion last year. This year we're appealing for point eight, uh, for $4.6 billion. And our funding has been consistently uh, between 50 to 60 to 70 percent, depends on, on the areas of response, uh, depends on what type of uh, support we had asked. We have never received, first of all, enough money for everybody, and the country is in a dying needs. When it comes to the Taliban interferences, again, it is di different from various settings, various provinces. When we have severe cases of the interferences, we stop distributions. And that happened at least in, in two provinces in the last four months. And once we have uh, addressed these issues, those have restarted. Now, most of the access uh, incidents and uh, what is leading to the temporary suspension of programs these days is related uh, to the directives uh, against Afghan women working for national and international NGOs and, and uh, those associated matters. It's not related to security issues. And we continue to enjoy quite a good physical access throughout the country. It's exactly those edicts which have been put in place. Uh, I hope I answered your question. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, Ramiz, just before we go on, if I, we could ask you to email your opening remarks with all the data and numbers you had, uh, just so, we, so our journalist colleagues have the exact figures. That would be most helpful. Uh, Michelle, please, Reuters. Thank you, Ramiz. Michelle Nichols from Reuters. Um, I just wanted to ask about what you're hearing from donors, given um, all the crackdown on women, basically. What kind of concerns are donors expressing to you about continuing to donate and help the Afghan people and what's involved with that delivery? And you know, it was a, it was a big ask last year for $4.4 billion. You got three quarters of it. Are you, are you worried it's going to be have a big impact on what you get this year? Uh, absolutely. Uh, thank you for raising these questions. And we have to understand that Afghanistan uh, is uh, heavily dependent on the uh, external aid. And this aid uh, also is subject to the approvals of capitals, parliaments, public opinion. And donors will have more and more difficult time in convincing their own constituency that it's a valuable case to continue to contribute to Afghanistan when the violation of the human rights, or particularly the rights of the women and girls, uh, is so obvious. So we continue to make it very clear to everyone uh, that, first of all, those bans and those edicts are extremely harmful. Um, and that we need to uh, make sure that these barriers are removed. On the other hand, we continue to advocate uh, with the donor community to, to say, saying, okay, please remain engaged. Please continue to help us. We know it's more difficult now for you to convince your taxpayers and, and, and those good people around the world to contribute and to support. Uh, be, by all means, uh, always stay away from any politicization of the aid uh, aid and will always be away from the politics. Aid will never be conditional. 
It is something which we give because we help the people. But unfortunately, in the current situation, it's more difficult for the donors to convince their own constituencies and public opinions uh, to contribute uh, more enthusiastically. Nevertheless, we are grateful to our donors for their continued interest. Uh, but they want to make sure that our um, action remains to be principled, that we deliver with women and through the women, and that's what we are committed to. Can you can you just remind us of um, I don't know some of the some of the ways that the UN prevents the aid from being aid or money being diverted and ending up in the hands of the Taliban? Uh, first of all. Uh, we do not work for the institutions of the de facto authorities. We work directly by providing aid directly to the people or working through uh, the uh, well-reputed, well-established um, international organizations and NGOs and national NGOs. So that's number one. Uh, we have risk management and mitigation mechanisms, including the payments verification systems, which make sure that uh, no payment is made to listed individuals or organizations associated with listed individuals. We uh, engage the third party monitoring into all activities which are implemented in the country, and we do have actively functioning accountability to affected population mechanisms so that the, um, the people who are benefiting from providing the assistance, that they have uh, always uh, open lines to communicate back to us about what's happening, be it uh, hotlines which function, be it uh, a possibility to raise the complaints or raise the alarms uh, or, or, or be a whistleblower. So all of those mechanisms are actively in place. This is a comprehensive system. And I can assure you uh, that uh, we work in an environment which is highly mindful uh, of these uh, possible uh, developments. I also must admit that our major issue right now is uh, ability to address uh, the very basic needs of the people, and this relates to the health needs, it relates to the nutrition, and um, uh, avoiding the situations of naked uh, malnutrition and hunger. And uh, this is where most of the system goes. We don't have uh, really any uh, programs such as uh, scaled training activities, capacity building, or what traditionally would be known as a development assistance, including, uh, let's say, development of infrastructure. The program right now is really focused on uh, basic relief uh, provision to the affected population. Thank you. Um, Miriam, yes, please. Uh, Mr. Lakpurov, I know you have uh, ongoing discussions and meetings with the Taliban. Do you feel the division that we are hearing uh, that is going on between the Taliban um, leaders in Kabul and Kandahar, um, with uh, Shurai Ulama and the leaders who are in Kabul disagreeing on the um, girls' education ban and also the um, um, organize, uh, organizations that women are not allowed to work. Um, do you feel that um, division between the Taliban and how do you think that is going to um, um, affect the, the, the decision and the um, ban that is in place right now? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, you know, United Nations has made uh, its position very clear. Uh, we advocate and they communicate for universal uh, human rights, including for rights of women and girls, and we've been very clear. I've been asking for the skill, schools to be open uh, for quite a considerable period of time, for a year now, since we had the ban. Now, if you want me to comment on internal matters, uh, I do not think it is helpful for us to comment on, on the divisions or the differences of opinions which the de facto authority representatives or various uh, members of the Taliban may have from the men. It's an internal matter of the movement, and uh, everybody has seen these debates going in every place. And uh, what we ask from the de facto authorities is what the United Nations asks in every other country, and that is that the girls are be given what is their right, and their right is to be a full member of the society, to be a, uh, fully gainfully employed and have ability to get education, health services, and everything else what belongs to the women. And that's, uh, that's what we ask for. Uh, from my interactions uh, with many Afghans across various uh, 
parts of the society. I think this is a message which resonates with many, uh, and we do hope that a rightful decision within the framework of uh, the uh, recognized human rights framework and uh, within the norms of international law will be adopted. Thank you very much. Ramiz, uh, I think you're now off the hook. Thank you very much for agreeing to come on and for this comprehensive update. And please, if you can uh, send us those opening remarks, we can share them with the journalists here. And all the best to you and, uh, and the colleagues in uh, all over Afghanistan. And thank you very much. Thank you very much, Stefan, and thank you for having us. All is great. Thank you. Have Bye -bye. a good day. All right. Uh,